This news, which came through just a short time ago, Ian Rappaport saying that Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr. set to have dinner with the Patriots brass and coaches tonight in Foxborough. And he has a top 30 visit tomorrow, sources saying. Uh, New England continues to do all the quarterback homework. So let's bring in Tommy Kerr, Phil Perry, right now, as we can. Uh, Phil, what do you make of this that uh, Michael Penix now added to the list of guys who've been brought in? Yeah, really interesting because he's not in that class in terms of being a high-end first-round pick. That's not how he's considered by the league. And so now they're broadening their search. And I wonder if... They're broadening it because there might be some of that same disagreement, lack of consensus that Tom and I had off the very top of the show on J.J. McCarthy. And if they think, oh, the best thing for us, if we can't get settled on one guy at three overall, if we do end up trading back, now we're open to the second tier of quarterbacks, whether it's Michael Penix or Bo Nix or maybe even further down the line, Spencer Rattler, people like that. Uh, for me, Tom, he comes with a variety of concerns. Michael Penix does. He is off the charts in terms of the intangibles stuff. Tough. He's been through a lot personally. He's dealt with two season-ending knee injuries, two season-ending shoulder surgeries. Uh, so all kinds of grit there. And he's played some really high-level football the last couple of years. But there's a lot that makes him a second-round prospect as opposed to a high first-round prospect like some of these other guys, too. I, I think it's good that they kick the tires on every single prospect that they could conceivably cross paths with and I think that Michael Penix while there are aspects of his game that aren't delightful including the injuries including the relatively older age he's 24 now and will be 24 as a rookie there are elements of his game with the, the arm strength the ability to just move the ball with a flick of his wrist the leadership skills the toughness now when Gerard Mayo and Elliot Wolf discussed all the quarterback prospects they talked about the toughness and it's more germane when it comes to McCarthy Penix and Drake May to me, and Jaden Daniels too, but you figure he goes to the commanders, whatever. All those guys are tough, and it's absolutely indispensable to have physical and mental resilience when they get here. So Penix to me, if you end up trading down and getting Michael Penix and having artillery to fill wide receiver, offensive tackle, cornerback, edge, all those places or most of them, that's awesome. That's great. That's why I, again, circle back to the conversation we had at the top, and I eventually folded my tent on J.J. McCarthy because you can't go wrong in many ways, the Patriots should not be able to go wrong in this draft. They can screw it up after the player gets here, but the player they select is going to be worthy of being a, an NFL starting quarterback. But you wouldn't take Michael Penix at three overall, for I example. I would not. No, okay. no. If, yeah, so for the folks who are tuning in and say, Penix at three, I would highly doubt that. Okay, so it, in this scenario, would it then, do you think it's more likely that the Patriots are trading down, getting a package of picks, and then you're looking at Michael Penix in, say, you, you said second round. Do you think that there's any chance he jumps to the, to the end of the I first do. round? I do. I think there's a chance he gets taken in the first round. There seems to be a lot of buzz around the Raiders and Michael Penix. The Raiders are quarterback needy. They're right in the middle of the first round, and so maybe they feel comfortable there taking him there. Uh, there there's a lot, though, that, that should give you pause as a franchise that's investing in this guy as the face of your franchise. It starts with the injuries to me. Two torn ACLs to the lead leg. So his right leg um, over the course of his career, that doesn't bode all that well for his long-term health with that particular knee. Uh, his accuracy in the short range isn't awesome. He, he is thought to be, and he played in an offense that was, thanks in part to three quality NFL receivers that are all get drafted this year, and a great offensive line. I believe they won the award for the best offensive line in college football this past year. They threw that thing down the field, down the field, again, 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 and again. So if he was going to a Bruce Arians type of offense, Tom, that's your guy right there. But if you want to be able to dink and dunk a little bit more, he's probably not it. Let me and that's why scheme fit to me, sorry, T, is, yeah. is so important with Penix. Because if you look at that, what he was so great at and why he was you know, absolutely scintillating in the national semifinal was his downfield throws and accuracy. But as we all know, it's easier to track a fly ball than a line drive. You're going to be a more accurate quarterback down the field if you can keep it on the grid if you have a penchant for doing that. J.J. McCarthy rarely threw downfield compared to the other guys. But he was as accurate as could be relative to, for instance, Drake May on the underneath. He blew May away in terms of accuracy underneath. The Patriots don't have the artillery to be a downfield passing team. End of story, and it's going to take years for them to build that up. That's why if you look at a McCarthy versus a Penix or even a May, there's a better fit for the personnel in some ways. I look at – due diligence has to be part of this as well, right? They're doing due diligence by talking to all these quarterbacks. 
what else would there be to gain? You know, if they're not planning on trading out of that number three pick, what else do they stand to gain by meeting with, with all these different quarterbacks here leading up to the draft when you've, you're kind of coming up on a short clock? Yeah, not really, though. I mean, you you've so? already – no, I think right now you're into talking about, okay, who's going to go undrafted? Who are the UDFAs that we want to chase? Um, you're looking at medicals and trying to establish things like that. I think right now is the time that where you – Try and dot your I's and cross your T's because you don't know what Oakland's going to do or Denver's going to do or the Giants might do. So, or, what, so what do you gain by, by all these interviews in, in Michael Penix? If you trade down, then you say you're, you're taking – Oakland wants to come up and get J.J. McCarthy. How much are you going to give us? Right. You're going to give us this, this, and Devontae Adams? All right. Right. Let's do that. Say the bag, right, that we've been talking about for weeks. Say, say it's overwhelming on draft night. And, Wow. We weren't planning on trading out of three, but we do have some concerns about the quarterback that falls to us there. Maybe we should take said bag. And now we're in the mix for a day two quarterback, whether it's Michael Penix or one of these other guys. I would say, too, this, the, the reason this story is interesting to me is because this does represent somewhat of a shift, at least publicly, meaning they didn't meet with Michael Penix even at the Combine. Now, he was at the Senior Bowl. Patriots had representatives there, although Elliot Wolf was not there. Um, they didn't send a huge contingent to his pro day. I believe his pro day was on the same day as North Carolina's. So they had, I, I think it was Cam Williams, who's the director of college scouting, hugely important guy in their front office for draft weekend. But it wasn't Mayo and Elliot Wolf. And so if they think there's any chance they might be in the day two or late day one quarterback mix, it behooves them to get as much information on all these guys that they can. But it, this does feel like a little bit of a shift, Tom, because it felt like for weeks, months even, Boy, they haven't done almost anything on, on Michael Penix as far as we know. There's all sorts of private workouts, Zoom calls that you can mm -hmm. do with these guys. So they may have been doing all this stuff with Michael Penix, and we just don't know it. This is the first bit of public information that we have that says they're going to spend hours with this guy. So to answer your question, this could be cover your ass for a trade down. Okay. Not to say they're going to do it, but more or less, if this, this, and this happens, well, then we're out of the quarterback market, which is what our default is as we sit here right now.